Hi everyone. Recently I got a, an opportunity to work on a project where I employed topic modeling to eventually reach the solution. So I thought of documenting what the approach was and to share my learnings with you I decided to uh, make a video on this. So without further ado let's get straight to the content itself. So let's set the context right. What is topic modeling and where should we use it? Topic modeling is basically clustering a group of text data. Um, it's it's more towards the exploratory side of a lot of um, documents or articles. You don't have time to read it and manually sort it or categorize it. So we a model would take care of this for you. And uh, rather than seeing it as a classification, see it as a cluster. Uh, and I'll give you why we should see it as a cluster towards the end of uh, this uh, this project or this uh, short project that I've done. All right. So yeah, maybe I'll start with the data set itself. Uh, right now, what you're seeing is my GitHub repository. Uh, here you'll get an idea of what I'm doing, all the tools and the underlying architectures that I've used, and finally the data set. Let's take a, a deeper look at what I'm handling here. So this is a data set from the Hugging Face uh, repo. And, and it's basically CNN news articles. We've got a lot of them. And I'm specifically taking the test split. We have three splits here, train, validation, and test. I'm taking test because I wanted to keep the number of uh, articles as less as possible so that I finish off my modeling and I can um, apply the rest of the steps sooner than actually training it and you know making it better so I, I decided to just finish off the project uh, so that I can work on uh, understanding it better all right so this is the data set and I'm just interested in the article column highlights and ID I don't know what it is and I I do not intend to know uh, understanding the scope of this uh, uh, project all right so yeah, that's the uh, data set. Uh, now I think we will uh, go to the notebook itself. All right, the first thing that you need here is a library called Bird Topic. Before understanding Bird Topic, let's understand what is Bird. B E R T, bidirectional encoder representations with transformers. I know it's a mouthful of words, but basically what it does is. It uses transformer architecture. We will discuss transformers in a, a later video, but for now, let's understand it as a deep learning model. That's it, by Google AI. Now, how is it different from the traditional uh, language models? Here, the difference is, it looks, if, if we have a word in context, it looks to the left and the right, or the entire sentence to get the context better. <coughs> One example is, um, the river bank. The term bank here is used in a particular context. It has got a particular meaning there. Now, let's say I want to withdraw money from the bank. Here, bank is different. Uh, the way the same word uh, used in two different uh, contexts um, are given here, but the traditional models fail in understanding this. So, Bird handled this pretty gracefully. So that's the reason why we are using BERT. And what is BERT topic? Well, a topic modeling library built on top of BERT architecture. So we install that first. <coughs> then we go to importing all the necessary libraries. Pandas we use to handle the data frames. Data sets is used to uh, get the particular data set from hugging face. BERT topic is what we just discussed. All right, now we are getting into the uh, actual hands-on part. Uh, we import the data and it somewhat looks, uh, by the way, we are importing this from uh, Hugging Face. Uh, and it, this is the object uh, in which they uh, store the data. It's a custom object made by Hugging Face and it's data set dictionary, a fancy dictionary basically, which handles uh, uh, the split as well. Now we have train, validation, and test. Uh, I already mentioned that I'm, I'm interested in test because just because the other two are the 
there's a lot of articles to handle so i thought let, let's stick to the lower end even then we have around 11.5k articles that's still a lot to work on right <clears throat> again um i mentioned that i'm interested in only this particular uh, part of the data set so what i'm doing is i'm saving it as just taking the article part from the data set and i'm uh, saving it as a panda series and here is a representation of how one article would look like that's a lot right and uh, categorizing this manually can be a task this is just one imagine not imagine in the actual case itself we have 11.5k of this which is, is a lot of manual labor right so we need a better solution and that's what topic modelists are doing here for us all right now we are here initializing the topic topic modeling object <clears throat> here i am mentioning that i need 100 clusters or 100 i want it the articles to be clustered into 100 different topics and this is the encoder model used uh, i'm sorry embedding model used what is embedding uh, embedding is uh, basically converting the text or the string to a a vector format or a, a series of numbers so that the computer could understand it better and capture the semantics in a better way <clears throat> so this is a, a model made by sentence transformers so you can directly uh, yeah, get the embedding model by employing this uh, all right now the next part is here i have mentioned the language to be english this is by default uh, the case but i just mentioned it uh, anyway and verbose equals true uh, takes care of uh, or tells the uh, model that hey when fitting the model I, i'd like to see the see what is happening behind that you'll see in the next cell so this output that you're seeing here is uh, is a result of setting this uh, parameters true all right so here we are fitting the model and we we have two uh, values uh, towards the end of it one is the topics itself and then we have the probabilities probabilities can be for each topic uh, what is the probability that uh, this article is part of this topic you know for each we have topics and anything with a probability of greater than 0.5 is considered better and the highest one is tagged as the cluster or the topic of that particular article that's what's happening behind but let's not worry too much about that let's uh, simplify this uh, line and say that here it's fitting and uh, we have got the topic right now topics right now the next two lines here i have uh, used it because i wanted to save the model and pull it back whenever required i'll give you why the i'll give the reason why i did that uh, initially i trained using um, the training set itself it's a lot of data and it, it took hours to complete and suppose you you you've completed training and then you come back after 24 hours and then try to um, get on with um, the the rest of the notebook as an after training part but then now the notebook restarts and then you have to do everything from scratch including the training part so it's better that whatever you've trained you output as a uh, model and then bring it back again when required so that's what i'm doing with these two lines here now let's understand the uh, output now we got we gave some articles and then we got something out let's understand what that something is so again with these uh, uh, two cells i created a data frame which gives me an idea of what was my input what did i output article um, if you remember that was our initial uh, pandas data series and now we uh, merged it into a, a data frame and then for each article there is an associated topic id um, and that id is represented using a topic name as well now you might have a doubt here why is my topic an id a number 
that's because uh, it's clustering and it's not saying that this is the exact name of the topic what it's doing is these many articles have something in common and i don't know what that something that that term is but i'm just going to give it an id and i will also tell you that these are the major keywords uh, representing that topic vaccine vaccination children health for example for uh, topic 45 these represent 45 now naming it in a more readable way is up to you uh, so yeah this is our a glimpse of what you gave in uh into the model and then what was uh, you know spit out uh, towards the end of uh, fitting the model now let's understand it a little more uh, we've got 100 topics here and uh, we have a count of how many articles are binned um in each uh, topic id and we have a representation uh, as well representation just being if you notice here let's say the topic 1 all right no topic 0 these are the top four uh, keywords representing it and we have more of uh, such uh, terms representing the uh, topic so it's just four if you want to see more uh, go ahead uh, uh, take a closer look at the uh, column representation upon running this particular code now this representative document part is give me a, an example of of a document present in that particular topic or that cluster it's it's what you are uh, seeing here all right uh, the same thing in a different way is what what we have implemented here if you want to see this you know in an expanded way run this particular code and you you get the same and then a representation of the topic also you will get this represents topic 9 and this is the article all right now let's make it a little more fun by adding visuals to it if you run visual topics uh, function here you'll get a very interactive chart again uh, doing whatever we just saw there but in a better sense let's say yeah topic 4 i'd like to understand more about that but visually um yeah so this is what it is topic 4 these are the major um keywords and the this is the number of articles present in topic 4 you got the idea right likewise for topic 0 and so on all right same thing but with bar graph the regular old bar graph again uh i i prefer this because it's more readable that is done and yeah let's let's take a look at one more piece of this now we have mentioned that we need 100 topics right what if i i want to see it at a higher level if not 100 topics maybe 50 or 30 or even maybe even 10 topics instead of running this every time let's understand the pattern first and if needed we'll retrain again with in our topics parameter or uh, set different all right so that is what we can accomplish using hierarchical topic modeling upon running this code this will uh, give the correlation of all the topics that we have generated so far and they um, um, segregate this uh, based on colors as well so it's it's easier to read and again this is interactive if you hover over it all right guys that's it uh, i hope this helped if you uh, found this helpful uh, please uh, subscribe and if you have any comments on whatever we did just now please uh, share it in the comments uh, and i really hope that you learned something new today uh, see you in the next one thank you